You know how you can tell someone is a runner? You don't have to, they'll tell you. Hello sewing people of the internet. So in this video I'm going to continue the evaluation of the Singer. So this video I'm going to continue the evaluation of the Singer heavy duty machine. I'm going to talk about the machine for a second, uh, just bear with me. But uh, before I get to that, uh, in this video I'm going to make another water bottle uh, carrier belt thing. I don't know what to call this. Uh, I don't know that I've done a video making one of these before. I did a video where I repaired one and uh, anyway I've made a few of these things. The other day uh, I had occasion to make one for a friend of mine from my running group and I thought you know what I should make another one for myself because these things get really really sweaty and nasty and uh, often I'll need one and uh, it's in the wash or whatever so it's good to have a couple. So the reason I'm doing this video is uh, yesterday when I made the one for my friend, I used the Singer Heavy Duty, and I, I think it's time for me to express some conclusions. I'm not finished with this, but I think it's time to really talk about what I have determined about this machine. So let's talk about that, and then I'll make this pouch thing. I'm putting this at the front of the video, sort of as a prediction, I guess. Not, it's more of a post-diction, but uh, I guess we'll see if the results I had yesterday are repeated today. But the results I had yesterday was, this thing was awesome. Like really, really great at sewing this project. Uh, I, I'll put a picture up of the pouch I made yesterday, but it's made out of uh, X-Pac V21RS fabric with a, a stretch nylon, a pretty heavy stretch nylon. I'll, I'll put the name of it on the screen, I don't remember right now. It has mil-spec 17737 webbing and uh, YKK number eight continuous coil zipper and spacer mesh uh, on the back and it just did great like really really well um, I don't know if I would say uh, yeah I might say it did better than most of my vintage machines would do there's probably like the Kenmore over there would probably be comparable so I guess what I want to say is this. I've been hemming and hawing throughout this series about not wanting to give a final opinion, and at some point I'm going to have to give a final opinion. I fear that I'm going to give my final opinion, and then the thing's going to burst into flames, and I'll have to retract it. But I am really digging this machine now. I, I really have to go back and, and eat my words a little bit, because I have not had a high opinion of these machines, uh, and I've told people that I don't recommend that they buy them. I don't think it's a machine for everyone, and I think that vintage machines are still just better, they're just made better, and, and I, I like using old things anyway. So if you've been following me down the vintage machine path, don't get rid of all your vintage machines and go get one of these. I definitely don't think anyone should do that. But if you're starting out, and you maybe aren't that mechanically inclined and don't want to deal with the possibility of having to do any repairs or, or you know adjustments to a vintage machine that's possibly been neglected. Uh, if you just want to open the box and start sewing, so far I don't have any reason not to recommend this machine. I have two caveats that I'm still wanting to learn more about. One is, is it going to break? If it if it had broken by now, then I would be trash talking this machine. Uh, you know, nothing I've done should have broken it, so I'm not surprised that it hasn't broken yet. Uh, if it doesn't break for two years, I, you know, if I use it hard for two years and then have to go buy another one, I mean, it's not, I don't like that about modern manufacturing and stuff, but it's not that unexpected. Uh, total tangent, but I manage the property here, and some of the spaces have uh, through the wall air conditioners and I just had to replace one that was two years old because it costs more to fix it than it does to just replace it. So it's just the way of the world, unfortunately. I don't love that, but if I got a couple of years out of this machine, I wouldn't be mad about it. If I got six, eight, ten years out of this machine, I'd be thrilled, honestly. The other question that I haven't explored yet is, am I impressed by this machine or would any comparable Singer machine, including the ones that don't say heavy duty on them, impress me just as much. And I plan to explore that question. Uh, it might be a little bit longer before I can, but I am curious, 
as far as I can tell, the real difference between the heavy duty machines and the, the standard machines is this has a little bit more power. It has a uh, one amp motor, I think, compared to a 0.7 amp motor, something like that. And that may be a significant difference or it may be no perceivable difference at all. I don't know. If, if it's no difference, then it would come down to, do you want a gray one or a white one? You know, if you are willing to pay more for a gray machine, then fine. So anyway, I just, if you're watching this series because you want to know what I'm continuing to learn about this machine, you don't care about making a, a water bottle holder for running. I'm really liking this machine. I'm very impressed with it. I would urge you to stay tuned throughout this video and let's see how it does again on this project. There are two things that it did not do well. Well, that's not true. It, there's one thing it did not do well and there's one thing I did not even try. On the pack I made yesterday, the final step is sewing through the 17737 webbing that's folded over itself with a layer of 4088 uh, binding. So it's, it's webbing, binding, webbing, and the rest of the pack and the other layer of binding. So it's a relatively thick and complicated sandwich of materials and it, it couldn't do it. I ran into the problem that the tension just wasn't enough to get through it and I've experienced that with 17737 webbing in like three layers it couldn't do so i did that on another machine and then uh, i bound the bag and uh, i didn't even bother on this machine i just used my binding machine i don't have an attachment to do binding with and because this is a pack that i'm going to be using i don't want to mickey mouse something together so i'm just not doing it just know if you want to do binding, I haven't explored that on this machine. It's not the machine I would go to for binding. Anyway, all right, let's move on to the project. I pretty commonly get questions about things that I make, about whether or not there's a pattern available for them. I, the answer is almost always, well, always no at this point. Uh, I don't know how to make a pattern available to you on the rare occasion that I make. A lot of stuff I... I'm doing, I draw the pattern out on the fabric, cut it, and that's the last time I ever see it. Uh, I've made a few of these, so I did make a pattern out of this, and I thought it would be interesting for you to see. So this is just a file folder that I cut the basic shape out of, and then there's these two pieces for the pocket. You'll see this when this goes together. And then I made a piece for the, this is just paper, for the stretch pocket for the bottle. The reason this is paper is a gone through a few different renditions of this to find the right shape and size. So if you want to make, I don't think anybody watching this is going to want to make one of these, but if you do freeze frame this and scale this somehow or figure it out, it's a uh, it's pretty simple shape. But And I came up with this pattern by patterning an existing running water bottle pack that I already had. And I just kind of modified the shape a little bit to make it what I wanted. If someone wants to school me on how to digitize a pattern and make it available, I could probably make tens of dollars a year selling my patterns, so let me know. So the pouch is just made to hold a standard bicycle water bottle. Of course, I don't have one here to show you. Uh, and then it has this pocket, and it's just enough to hold a gel and my car key and a pocket knife, uh, just a couple of small things that I generally have on me. Uh, you could, of course, give this pocket some volume if you needed to carry more things but if I'm carrying more than this I'm probably wearing a running vest uh, I've mentioned this before just in case you're interested this fabric this is x pack v21 I think vx21 uh, from ripstop by the roll and I had it printed custom printed by them they have a, a feature called outdoor ink where you can either buy designs that they sell or you can have your own uh, pattern. You input a, a JPEG or a couple of other different file types, I think. Uh, so this is just a photograph of a painting I made and then it printed out. It's pretty cool. I really like doing this stuff. So uh, anyway, that's what that is. For the new pack that I'm making today, I'm going to use this orange digital camo pattern that came from Ripstop by the Roll. <clears throat> and again, this is X-Pack V21 RS. The main back panel, kind of the structure of the bag, is also V21RS, just in black. The back side of it's white. 
And then I've got some orange spacer mesh. I bought this at Rocky Woods, I think. I want to say it was on closeout. I don't know if they still have it or not. Uh, so I'm just trying this out. So the first step is to sew my number eight YKK zipper to the pocket pieces. Although the first step before that is to put a zipper slider on it before I forget. Quick note on zipper sliders. This zipper slider is a reverse coil slider. You might be able to see that the opening on the bottom has a higher wall than the opening on the top. If it were the other way, if that larger opening was on the top, then it would be a standard coil. That's where the teeth go, is in that larger opening. So if you want the smooth side of the zipper up, which became trendy some time ago, uh, instead of the teeth, then you need a reverse coil zipper. The zipper is the same, as long as it's a coil zipper. It's just the uh, slider that's different. Okay, I have the machine loaded with some V69 thread, and the first thing I'm going to do, sew the top of the pocket uh, right sides together to the zipper slide. Oh, before I do that, i got to put the zipper foot on. I don't love needing to put a zipper foot on. I don't normally have to do this with some of my vintage machines, but I do love how quick it is to do with this uh, snap-in foot. So that's kind of cool. I have noticed though that occasionally I will hit it by accident and knock it loose. I don't love that either. It's probably a training issue for me just getting used to it. Now I'll just fold it down and top stitch it. Now I'll just repeat that process for the bottom part of the pocket. I need to switch the zipper foot over to the other side. It has two positions depending on what side of the zipper you're sewing. I like to be transparent on this channel. I'm gonna make a full confession. I didn't like the way I got the top stitch done really on either side of this, so I've redone it. This fabric, you can see the holes in it. Uh, and this fabric's quite expensive for, compared to what I normally use. So I, I do have more of it, but I'm not gonna make all new pieces just because of that. I don't think anybody's gonna ever be able to tell and it's just gonna get a lot of sweat on it uh, anyway so I'm not real worried about it but just know that I got that wrong on the first try uh, I'll, I'll give the excuse that when I'm making videos sometimes I am concentrating on other things and and mess up the sewing sure that's that's my excuse but anyway just so you know in case you see the holes later on in the video yep I know the way this pattern evolved I end up having to make a little extension to go here and rather than cut out a really specific shape I just I'm going to take this square of fabric or rectangle whatever it is and sew it down and then I'll just trim it to match before I do that I'm going to put the standard foot back on As you may have noticed, I was just sewing across the zipper teeth, no issue at all. I think it is a little bit easier when sewing it with the teeth down as I am in this situation.
Okay, I've switched out to some white thread and I'm gonna put a wide zigzag stitch on a double fold hem on top of this elastic. I realize with white thread it's not that visible, but looks like it did a fine job of that. Uh, if you don't know, I used a zigzag stitch because that gives it a little bit more stretch. Okay, I've got the elastic pocket sewn down and now I've put the whole sandwich together. So I've got the spacer mesh on the back and I'm gonna sew all the way around the perimeter to lock everything together. And I'm just using, I don't know, maybe an eighth inch seam allowance, something like that. bit extra there because a lot of stress will be on this pocket when I'm stretching it to put a bottle in and take it out. So I've cut a piece of 17737 webbing, mil spec 17737 webbing. Uh, I just estimated it, wrapping it around my waist to get an approximate length. And just the way I'm gonna do this is sew one end to one end, sew the other end to the other end of the pouch, and then I'll cut it in the middle and put the buckle on. Uh, it's not really that important, but that's what I'm doing. And I'm just gonna keep this white thread in here because you're never gonna see it, so it really doesn't matter. I'm sewing the webbing to the zipper. It just happens to be that's where it, or I'm sewing it on top of where the zipper is, it just happens to be that that's where it ends up going on this pouch. Uh, so I'm kind of asking a lot of the machine here. As I said at the beginning of the video, when this gets doubled over with the binding in the mix, it, it doesn't work very well, but this should work fine. It did the last time, so. No problem. So as I said, I'm not gonna bind this on the Singer machine, and this video is not to delve into the mysteries of binding. 
Uh, just for the record, I'm using Milspec 4088 binding on my Yamada FY335A machine. Uh, and I'll just let you watch this part of the process, but uh, it's a whole other subject. So. And a broken needle. All right, take two. And I ran out of bobbin thread. This is why I'm not doing a video on how to do binding. probably edited some stuff through the language. <clears throat> this happened to me yesterday on the other pack. I'm not really sure why because I've done a lot of binding on this machine without difficulty. But when I get to the part where it doubles over here, I keep breaking needles. So, But I can fix that. So this is where I had difficulty with the Singer machine yesterday, and uh, probably the most scientific approach would be to try it again, but I'm not going to. So since I'm here at the Sailrite, I'm just going to go ahead and use it, since it will definitely do this. I'm just tacking the straps down just for some additional strength. And the final step in this process is to just put a double fold hem on the end of the webbing. Just want to see if I want to shorten it at all. Since I don't need a lot of adjustability, there's no need in having a lot of excess strap. So I'll probably take a couple of inches off here. If you're new around here and are wondering about this machine, this is a Sailrite LSZ1 with the Worker B power pack motor on it. And that is why it's just so good at going slowly, but having a huge amount of torque available. So if you're thinking, wow, that's really incredible, you're right. So that's a completed running water bottle carrying pouch belt thing. Pretty good match to the existing one. It's kind of hard for me to show you, but pretty consistent. So hopefully it'll work just as well. So hopefully, you know, there's something about the pouch uh, construction that is useful or interesting to you. But uh, the main point of this video is that I'm really happy with the Singer heavy duty. Um, like I'm really starting to almost endorse the machine with some caveats. So I finished this project, I'm pointing over at my Sailrite that you can't see. I finished the project on my Sailrite LSZ1 because there were some things that this machine just doesn't do very well. Those could be uh, handled by different material choice or different design choice. Uh, so, you know, there's workarounds besides just going to a more capable machine. Uh, so, if this were my only machine, I'd have to make some changes and maybe those changes are compromises that I don't want to make. I don't know. But I could certainly make a pouch very similar to the one that I just made entirely on this machine. 
I am, however, limited by the machine's capabilities if what I'm doing does require those, those complicated seams that it was struggling with or the, the webbing that I want to use or whatever. Here's where I am right now. I have, for basically the entire time I've been sewing, been an advocate of a two machine minimum, a walking foot machine and a non-walking foot or drop feed machine. And a couple of times people have asked me, you know, would this be a good machine to complement the Sailrite? I'm leaning heavily towards yes. I mentioned in an earlier video that the reason I have a strong preference for my Singer 237 is that it uses the same bobbin as the Sailrite. Well, so does this one, actually. This one has plastic bobbins that come with it. I have actually used one of the plastic bobbins in the Sailrite. That was fine. I've had it mentioned to me in comments that using a metal bobbin in the uh, Singer Heavy Duty can improve performance. I'm not really sure how. I haven't, I haven't played with it at all. But uh, it is the same class of bobbin, a class 15 bobbin. So that's one argument for why I prefer the 237, that I can just switch bobbins between the machines if I need to, you know, if I've already got something started in a particular thread color and need to switch machines, I can just grab that bobbin. I don't have to load up another bobbin. Uh, the other advantage to the 237 is it fits in the industrial style table I have for my sale, right? This will not do that. But, you know, given the, the caveats that I've kind of given already about this machine, it has worked really well. The project that I just did isn't super challenging, but those are pretty heavy materials. Uh, not real thick layer counts or anything, but that was it. Not just the fact that it did it, but the fact that it did it as well as it did and as easily as it did. Uh, the feeding has definitely impressed me. It feeds better than I expected it to. So I still want to know if a cheaper, non heavy duty Singer new machine works similarly and I still have questions about longevity I believe I've said that ad nauseum at this point but if one were to ask me hey is this a good machine to add to my collection of machines to use as a starter machine uh, yes I, I think it is um, you know caveat emptor it's a plastic machine made in China that's not necessarily known for its long-lasting uh, high quality but it works really well uh, that's I think the important thing so you know if it was seven eight hundred dollars I would definitely not recommend it but for 200 and I think I paid 230 for this one uh, you're, you probably are not gonna do much better there are vintage machines that cost more than that that this will probably outperform not outlast but probably outperform uh, and again if you're if you're just starting out and you're not even sure if you want to sew I would say go to a thrift store and try to get a vintage sewing machine that's still I think a better way to go but you know if you know you're into the hobby and you need something that you can just plug in and start sewing with I'm, I'm leaning heavily towards yes thumbs up good machine go for it anyway we'll see what the next test brings I'm, I'm not done with this uh, evaluation but the direction is is definitely becoming clear so I hope you found that helpful or informative or something Comment down below if you have questions, comments, uh, whatever. If uh, you didn't check the description, there's a bunch of links there. If you click on some of those links and buy things, I get lots and lots of money. If you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the like button is always a nice thing to do. See you in the next one. Oh, before I go, if you're still here, uh, a lot of you have made some very supportive comments, uh, just in general lately, but in a recent video I did, I wasn't trying to, I hope it didn't seem like I was trying to badmouth anybody who had been critical in previous comments, but I really appreciate all the very supportive and kind comments that a lot of you have made. I've tried to respond to all of them, but just in general, I just want you to know, like I read every single comment. I try to respond uh, at least with a, a thumbs up on your comment, but it, just know it means a lot to me to hear from you guys, good or bad, but especially the, the supportive comments really do help. Uh, so thank you. Do you want me to shoot? It's already recording this, the, the bottle pouch. I can start it again. You can still record me, that's fine. Where's the? Oh, I didn't get it. What do you mean you didn't get it? I only got a little bit, but you took off. We well, yeah, took off. I'm including all of this in it. <laughs>